Hi everyone, Kirsty and Keish here and today we're going to talk through how our daughter happened. Obviously we are missing a key ingredient in a child um, so we're just going to quickly run you through kind of how we came to the decision to go the route that we went, what that route was. So we've been together for eight years now, we've been married for three um, and we did actually very briefly um, think that we were going to have a baby a few years before we did. So the first time around we made the major decisions that we ended up sticking with. So we needed to decide who was going to get pregnant and carry the child. Uh, we get this question a lot actually, how did we decide? Uh, to be honest it wasn't really a decision. It was something that Kirsty had always wanted to do and I had never been particularly interested in being pregnant or birthing a child and uh, my, <laughs> my stance on that has not changed after watching someone go through it all. <laughs> so uh, Not to put you off. <laughs> um, we also needed to decide on the route we were going to take, um, whether we were going to do IVF, or um, just insemination, whether we would do that at home or a clinic. I think this is where looking into the legal side of it really had an impact, um, as it was back then that we started to look at how it works to have two mothers, how this is in the UK, for any of you that haven't guessed, um, how two women can be on one child's birth certificate or whether adoption was a compulsory part of the process. We didn't particularly want to go down the IVF route, although that would have um, guaranteed me uh, a spot on the birth certificate, as of course you go through a registered clinic, then you do the whole process together, we both consider the parents. Um, but we didn't really want to do IVF if we didn't have to, as obviously it's an expensive process, it's uh, hard on the body yeah. with all of the hormones that you have to take. Yeah, there's a there's a lot to it. Um, it can be really stressful. We just thought we would try and do it kind of as you know. We didn't want it to feel too clinical, and yeah. we had no reason to think that I couldn't get pregnant naturally or as naturally as two women can. <laughs> yeah. So without the IVF route, um, doing at home insemination. Um, basically the easiest way for me to be on the birth certificate was for us to be married first. So we did um, decide to put plans on hold for a while. We did decide at that point not to go through a clinic to get a sperm sample and to find our own sperm donor. Yeah, so the main reason for this was we wanted to get to know the person a little bit, just kind of have that bit of personal connection. We also quite wanted to keep in touch with them and just for them to be a known person in a child's life, not as a parental figure, just kind of as a friend um, so that it would never be a massive deal when we revealed to them, this is your biological yeah. father. Like they wouldn't build up an expectation of this person. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously it's not like we were ever going to pretend that we were her biological parents, both of us. Could have tried. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they were going to know from quite early on that someone else was involved and we just didn't want it to be a big deal. We just wanted to say, oh yeah, you know, our friend, this guy, well, he helped us out. So yeah. That was why we chose that. So um, in terms of looking for known donors, we looked on uh, coparents.co.uk and also Pride Angel. Uh, we chatted to a few people at the time and we will circle back to this. <laughs> so we're gonna fast forward a few years now because like we said, we did wait after that. Yeah, so just over two years ago, we were in a position where we decided we were ready and um, we, owned our own house, we both had careers and were fairly settled, um, we were financially stable and it just 
felt like the right time um there was a few things that we did around that time we did also obviously spend a lot of time looking for a sperm donor um this is where the search before becomes really relevant <laughs> because the donor that we ended up going with was actually someone that we'd spoken to that first time that we were looking so um in terms of starting the process so with him um we obviously because we didn't go through a clinic so any testing we just carried out privately so the donor had a sexual health test at through the nhs and um, he shared the results with us obviously if you were to go through a clinic then things are very different and they do all that for you yeah so that's kind of the donor part of it and then from the getting pregnant side of it so there was obviously we decided to start looking for a donor um, at that time I started getting a bit more meticulous about tracking my cycle so I just used the app called Clue I had tried a few but I found Clue the best so that allowed me to track when I was on my period and we also got some ovulation tests at that time they were just quick dipstick ones really cheap off eBay um, I'll see if I can get a link and put it down in the description and um, I use them sort of every day around about when Clue predicted that I'd be ovulating uh, the good thing about Clue that I found was that you could put in positive ovulation tests and it would sort of recalculate your cycle and the more you do that the more accurate it becomes get as much data as you can before yeah. you start trying it will make your life so much easier yeah especially if you know you're not starting straight away it's all about the timing <laughs> it really is <laughs> especially when you don't have constant access <laughs> um if you've got to arrange to meet up with someone um or you're ordering a sample you really need to yeah. know when you need it so um i guess we'll get into the nitty gritty <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah so we'll just go through like the technique and the tools that we used um so we did purchase a metal speculum uh basically we chose this over plastic because the plastic ones are often disposable as they're not the easiest to clean whereas the uh stainless steel ones you can fully sterilize so uh, we uh, will point out as well speculums aren't a necessity but they yeah. do make it easier yes so um that just some three mil sterile pipettes and a foam torch <laughs> very important bit of kit there that was that was everything in terms of you know techniques and placement of things there are plenty of resources online that we looked at diagrams all sorts so um definitely uh do some research have a practice beforehand yeah it does i know we practiced a few times just using lube in place of the sample yeah it does make you feel a little bit more confident going into it and um, there's less worry about wasting any of the sample yeah a big thing that we were conscious about was trying to manage our own expectations yeah. we tried to prepare ourselves for it to take a year like we read that the average couple takes six months to a year yeah i'll put a proper stat up here yeah we can't remember it's <laughs> A year seemed reasonable for it to take. Yeah, and we also thought that our chances would be lower than the typical couple because we were having limited chances every month. Yeah. Um, we were more likely to miss the day, uh, you know, the window. So we tried to not expect too much. We kind of tried to convince ourselves that it would take a year so that if it happened earlier it was a bonus um having said that that did not stop every single period being hideous it felt like nothing was ever going to work 
Um, and I'm sure everyone that's been through this kind of process feels exactly the same. Um, it was fairly heartbreaking um, and almost every month made it feel more like we were never going to get there. So one complication that we did have in our journey was after the first month of trying, our donor got transferred to a different city, which was much further away. So we went from an hour trip to a three hour trip. Yeah. Each way. Each way, not round trip. <laughs> yeah. um, but at this point we were kind of invested. We'd already started. So we thought, let's stick with it. Hopefully it won't take too long and we won't be making this trip. Yeah. every month for a year he was also really good he'd come to us yeah <laughs> so on the fourth month of trying which was the time we were successful it was actually our it was our first wedding anniversary yeah so we went on a weekend away and we actually went to the donor on the way to our weekend away had a very awkward hotel visit <laughs> in which we checked out an hour after checking in <laughs> I'm sure the front desk uh, thought some things. Yeah, I mean, they weren't far off wrong, were they? <laughs> but that was the month, well, no, the second month that we'd switched to using the clear blue ovulation strips, like the ones that I'm about to put here. Um, so the reason we switched to them was because it gives you some advanced warning when you're about to ovulate. Whereas the strips we were using before just showed a positive on the day. Which means you get about 24, 48 hours it after depends, that. Yeah, it depends on which resource you read, but somewhere between 12 and 36 hours, which is yeah. not long. It's not a lot of notice when you've got to, you know, if it was slightly off from what you'd um, expected to rearrange to meet up with yeah. someone, especially if they're three hours away. The advance warning really helps, so we'd give him a kind of rough, we think it's going to be between these days, and then we'd get kind of five days window. Yeah, so we'd, we'd put a more um, in-stone date in as soon as I got a first smiley face. Yeah. So they, they definitely helped, we would definitely recommend those tests for yeah. when you're actually trying. Yeah, don't bother with them before you've started trying, but for whilst you're trying, it's worth them on it. And we didn't actually test every month. We really tried to avoid doing an early test because we didn't want to be in a situation where we'd got an early positive and then I started my period on time um, because that would have just been devastating, more devastating than it having not worked this week, this week, this month. Yeah, I never know initially. Yeah. Um, so I was late on the fourth month um, by quite a few days and I couldn't wait anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so before work at stupid o'clock in the morning, I took a test and all of my plans had been that as soon as I got a positive, I was going to go away and do this big announcement to let Kate know that I was pregnant. And what I actually did was go and wake up at five o'clock in the morning and say, it's positive, <laughs> it's positive. Um, and she didn't believe me. <laughs> she thought I was lying. <laughs> I demanded to see it. And then I also demanded... <laughs> that I do a test as a control. <laughs> Very as scientific. We are both scientists, or who were. <laughs> um, I didn't need a big announcement, just knowing that we were having a baby was enough. It was perfect. And I think that's kind of the end of our conception journey. Um, if you'd be interested in hearing more about the pregnancy and birth, please leave a comment down below. And that's something we could do in the future. So that's the end of the video. Um, it was a very talky one, we know, but we hope you enjoyed it anyway. Um, if you did, then please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. We will be trying to upload once a week.